Welcome to a new video in the VideoVision channel. Um, today we talk about fusion research and more specifically we talk about a new fusion energy record in the jet tokamak, meaning that in 2022 there was a video where we explained that jet, the big tokamak in the UK, run together in the European framework, Eurofusion framework, produced 59 megajoule of fusion power which was a fusion record, a record in fusion energy at that time. There was a press conference earlier on the, in February, on the 8th of February, I think, which released the news that JET had broken its own record and went to an even higher fusion energy. So as a reminder, I will just show what JET did in, tw in the end of 2022. And that's this thing here. So JET achieved a record fusion energy, what is shown here in these time traces. Here time is running, so this is like seven seconds. And in the high power phase, which lasts about five seconds, there is fusion power produced. What is labeled here DTE1 and 22 megajoule. This is the 1997 JET deuterium pritium campaign, which produced this in steady state and then a peak, but it was just a small blip of 16 megawatt. What was produced in 2022 is there is a variant which produced 42 megajoule, and then this is the record shot record discharge, which produced 59 megajoule by the end of 2022, which broke all sorts of records in terms of the, the fusion energy released in one experiment. By filling in deuterium tritium, which is the real fusion fuel, Remember that in the present day experiments, we usually don't do this because we don't have a license to operate with tritium. So in the new experiments, which I will talk about today, this record was actually increased. And I should say that the campaign in 2023, so the experimental campaign in JET, which again did deuterium tritium experiments, was not focused on breaking a record. It was focused on obtaining new understanding in deuterium tritium plasmas, confirming things in deuterium tritium, which we had found in smaller devices, like in the Astex upgrade tokamak, I will talk about this later. And then, of course, showing that you could reliably reproduce the stuff that we had done the year before. And almost by accident, during this campaign, doing this, trying to repeat this record discharge, a new record was set up. I have the time traces here as well, which I can show. Well, first of all, this is the slide from the press conference, which Eurofusion showed, calling a new fusion energy record. And you can see down here 69 megajoules. The previous number was 59 megajoules. Again, it's DT fuel, so you burn only 0.2 milligrams of this, and you would burn kilograms of coal to get to the same energy, which is the great thing about fusion, fusion fuel and fusion energy. You can also see a video of the discharge here, which is running not very spectacular. The high power phase is coming right now and you see that there is some dynamic in the plasma and you see it lighting up uh, brighter. This is the phase in which the 69 megajoules were produced. Now, if we look at the time traces of this, these are in gray, the traces I showed before from 1997. From 2022, which was the 59 megajoule, and now you can see this is the 69 megajoule, the red line here, and you see this was not done by extending the pulse length, the length of the discharge or of the high power phase, but rather by getting even more fusion power out of it, because the power which is shown on the y-axis is now of the order of 12 to 13 megawatts, and it was like 10 to 11 megawatts before. This came because the heating systems which are used to produce this were working even more reliably and producing even more power. And if you do this, theory says, and this was confirmed, you will also get more fusion power. And then in the integral, say in the average over this, also more fusion energy out of it. So this is great. And I said already, for me, the greatest thing is not beating the world record. This is a very nice thing. But really, the greatest thing is that we could do it again we could say, okay, this is not a one-off and you, you maximize everything and then you have one bang and, and that's it. No, if you go back, you can do the same conditions, you do the same experiment, you get the same result. And 
if you do a bit more heating, you actually get more fusion power, which is also predicted by all the theories. So this was a great confirmation that producing fusion energy in jet in steady state is not a one-off, but it is. It can be done reliably, repeatably, and it give us, gives us quite some confidence when we extrapolate this to ITER and the fusion power plant that we can do what we project for these experiments. There is the other aspect, which I said before, that JET also did a lot of other experiments. And I will briefly touch on two more experiments which were done in the last year. And they are related to videos which we did before. And the first one is on a benign way to exhaust power from the plasma. There is an edge instability. We link the video below. There is an edge instability which sort of leads to a pulsed expulsion of power from the plasma, so-called edge localized modes. And on Aztex Upgrade, this is the tokamak we run in Garching. It's half the size geometrically of JET. We had a new method by which we could speed up this instability, making it very small and finally to something which is more or less a continuous expulsion of the heat, but thereby reducing the peak heat loads dramatically, which the wall would see. And at that time we said, this is great. We think we should do this on ITER in a fusion power plant. Of course, doing it on Austix Upgrade doesn't mean you can do it in a fusion power plant. So what you need is a theory. As physicists, we develop a theory. We have a mathematical formula by which we predict if this should work and under which conditions it should work in ITER. And you want to test this theory. We don't have ITER yet. We don't have the fusion power plant, but we have JET. JET is larger by a factor of two. It has three meter major radius of the torus. Aztex upgrade is one meter 65. So what we did is to say, we predict that if you run JET in the following way, I will not go into the details, you can reproduce this quasi-continuous exhaust regime. And this worked spot on, which is a great result as well, because our approach of saying we have a step ladder of fusion experiments, there's Aztex upgrade, twice the size linearly JET, twice the size linearly ITER. This worked very well in going up this step ladder. You might call this the step ladder test. You want to test that if you do what you do in the medium sized experiment also works on JET, which gives you the confidence that the extrapolation based on this theory to the next step, which is ITER, will also work. And so this was done in the larger machine with more heating power, with higher plasma parameters, also in deuterium tritium, which was not very important for this experiment because theory doesn't predict a big change. And we didn't see a big change with deuterium tritium versus deuterium deuterium. But it's also nice to confirm that if you use the right fuel, as theory predicts, you can also achieve this regime. So that was one great thing, made us also very happy in Garching because it was our sort of invention that we brought to JET and it worked. And another thing, which I also had a video on in the last year, and we will also link this down here, is that we had a plasma regime in which we produced a strongly localized radiative zone. This was power exhaust through a diverter. And this radiative zone called the X-point radiator, we also wanted to reproduce on JET. And same thing. We have an idea how to do this. We have formula which describes this, the mathematical tools, the tools of the physicists to say, I do this here and I know if I do it somewhere else, it will behave like this because we have a law, a scaling law for this or a formula which predicts this. And we did this on JET as well. And it worked brilliantly too. So these are two great confirmations of stuff that we find in the smaller machine, which we propose to be used in the big machine eater and to get confidence, to increase the confidence that we can do it, we port it to the next step, which was JET. And I said was JET because what was also in the press is that JET, this was the final campaign of JET, the deuterium tritium performance, great performance in this and then closed down the machine. This was planned a long time before. JET is 40 years old and so it is also sort of coming into the years. So that was the, the plan which we had to close it, which in principle means we don't have this capability anymore that we could do something on Aztec's upgrade or another medium-sized tokamak in the Eurofusion program and then go from there to the next level to JET. But the good news is, and that was also in the press, a new machine is coming online which has the size of JET, 
but it is superconducting, has superconducting magnets, so you can actually run much longer discharges. You saw these five seconds in jet, which are limited by the heating, heating up of coils and other systems, and so this problem that you cannot do is steady state because your equipment is not built for it will not be the case. In the JT60SA tokamak, this is the machine in Japan, which was rebuilt from an existing device in a joint effort between the Japanese and Eurofusion. This machine went into operation, had its first plasma, more than one megamp, that also went through the press uh, in December, I think last year, December 2023. And so we look forward to exploiting this machine in the future to play the role that JET has played so far for us. And the final remark on this, we focused a lot now also on the deuterium tritium capability of JET. JT60SA will not have this capability. So this is a thing which we will be missing for some time because we cannot do experiments with tritium. But there are two machines coming up worldwide, one in China, so-called BEST, and one in the US, so-called SPARK. And they should take the role of being the devices in which you can test deuterium tritium. Not in a way that ITER will do it, where you have a burning plasma and positive net energy balance in the plasma, but do stuff like we did on JET, see how it behaves when you change the mixture of gases to deuterium tritium. This will be possible in these devices. So this says that, first of all, we broke the record. <laughs> Maybe even more important, we learned a lot of new stuff and the stuff that we, we, we propose to be used on the basis of our experiments in Aztec's upgrade was confirmed in JET. So we are now more confident that it will work on ITER and in the fusion power plant. And then while JET is being closed or has been closed by the end of 2023, there is a new machine online, JT60SA, which in some years when it reaches the full performance, can take the role in JET in terms of this size scaling because it is also more or less a factor of two larger than, for example, Aztec's upgrade. And so it will give us this possibility again. So I hope this is shedding some light on the very brief press releases which you have seen maybe in the news about this JET record and sort of the surroundings of this, what you can learn as well from deuterium tritium plasmas. If you have any comment on this, any further question, write it down in the comment section. We check the comment section and every now and then do an update on this. So thank you.